I drank a lot and I drank every night after the kids went to bed just to drink. Wine, uh, beer, vodka, hard liquor. It just grew to become something that really wasn't me, but it just became a habit. I really did not see myself quitting drinking anytime soon because I didn't think that it was affecting my life that bad. I wasn't realizing just how much it was influencing and taking kind of a control of my life. I mean, it really was. It was sad, you know, it was sad to think, wow, and for what? For what? What am I doing this for? Alcohol, every day, everywhere, it just was part of my life. I didn't even know what to expect. I just was kind of like, hey, you know, no big deal. I'm, I'm easy. I could do this. I had no expectation, and Michael didn't really even lead me into one. He just said, you know, things may happen. Just go with it. It was torturous, actually. It, it hurt emotionally and physically. I needed to acknowledge the, the hurts that I had personally, and I had to acknowledge the hurts that I had done others. And I wasn't even thinking, why do I drink through all of this? This had nothing to do with it. It just had to do with my lack of gratitude, I felt. And I was sad with myself and I was ashamed of myself. I used to like me, and I stopped. And then I had to say to the older Sarah, that's okay not to like yourself. <laughs> like, admit it, and it's okay because you wanna change. I went from that point to becoming a mother of my children, my beautiful children. And I thought of all the times that I just was not present with them. I was there. I mean, I do a lot with my kids, but I was, not really there like I should be, like I wanted to be. And that was hard to accept. But I was so grateful that they're little <laughs> and I have time. And I, I had seen the light of that, you know, I had seen the difference. Through part of the, uh, the session, I couldn't see my kids' faces. It was as if I had to work through things you know, kind of <laughs> wade through all these different dark emotions. And then I saw him, and I was like, <sighs> the experience was emotion. I don't think I stopped crying from the time I started the session to the time I ended. Tears just flowed. Had it been a movie, it's, it's a sad, depressing movie, but you don't want to stop watching it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> It was sad because I'd gotten so far away from where my true self really should be. And I was alone, and I had taken myself there. That was the sick part, <laughs> you know? It was all, I did this all to myself. I had to accept and move on, and, um, and I did, because I never wanted to stray as far away as I had from who I really am and what I really believe. That first experience was painful. I mean, I felt physical pain raw, guttural, sobbing emotion, and it really was my life. You know, it wasn't like I was in some, you know, fantasy. This was my life. And as hard as it was then, I'm, I'm so grateful for it. I needed to see that. The second session almost felt more like a reward <laughs> for my hard work. <laughs> that experience was bright and light and hope. I had had those four weeks to really kind of process what had happened to me <clears throat> in the first session. 10 years of therapy and, you know, a three hour period. When the second session came into swing, my world was just this peaceful babbling brook with a sheen of water just moving, you know, and I was like, okay. And all of a sudden, immediately, the people that I loved were in my face. I didn't have to look for them. They were right there. It really became a journey of God. And it was a journey of love. I loved everyone, including the people I couldn't stand. I found so many reasons to love them. <laughs>
right? You know, and not even about, oh, I feel sorry for them or, you know, oh, I just, everybody has some good qualities, even the worst people. You know, it's just we don't see them because the ugly just, we see it first. But I really started seeing these beautiful qualities in people and thinking, I need to keep this. You know, I need to keep this with me. And it was all about God. It was about the one God. All of a sudden, it was so clear to me that all these religions and all this information out there, spiritual information, is really coming from the same place. And I was so happy. <laughs> I was so happy to just be able to accept that. And it was a, a place of peace that I'll know till the day I die. I think religion can be scary for people, spirituality, well, you know, but really in that moment, it was just nothing but peace. And it's still with me here in this very moment. I forgot that I was an alcoholic. <laughs> and I think what I found was I was just kind of an unhappy person. And I didn't really have any good reason to be. I just sort of got there. It has changed me. I did it because of alcohol, but I came out realizing that that was just one of my problems. <laughs> it just helped me in so many different ways. As for my children, you know, they weren't well aware of certain things. You know, I'm mommy, I'm always, you know, and I'm silly and fun with them, but I didn't play as much with them. I was chasing my son, or like, you know, literally running after him, and they were laughing so hard. They're like, mommy, I don't think I've ever seen you run before. <laughs> Just a more playful mom, and they like it. I don't know how I would have gotten to this place because this was my spiritual awakening, my joy awakening, my honest awakening. A lot happened that I hadn't really expected, planned for, and it was pretty amazing. I just, I don't know how to explain it. But this was a true blessing to me at this point in my life. I don't know what would have happened had I not done it. I don't think I would be as joyful as I am sitting here right now, that's for sure. I don't know how it happened, but I'm grateful that I'm here. I was just a simple, thoughtless person for a time, and I lost my way in just unhappiness for no good reason, because I have everything. I have a wonderful family. You know, we have a wonderful life. I, I couldn't ask for anything more, I really can't. I'm grateful. I should have been grateful for what I had before I even started the, the program. But when I did, it just brought to me so clearly, you know, it doesn't take much to be happy in this world. You know, it really doesn't, it's pretty simple. And, um, and that's what it ended up becoming for me was just be present and be grateful. And I am, you know. And I am. <laughs>